Welcome home. We are so glad that you're here. At Tabernacle Praise, our mission is to turn the hearts of the people in the community back to God, to reclaim those who have fallen by the wayside, and to win the lost to Christ. Each service has been designed with you in mind. Stay tuned for a word from the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'm so excited and thrilled that you are here tonight with us as you and I grow deeper in our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He has been doing wonderful things and awesome things in our lives. And I hope you have seen the hand of God on your life and God orchestrating and moving things around them to fit the destiny that he has for your life. And even if you feel like you don't know what your purpose is and you don't know who you are, understand tonight that God has a plan for your life. He has destiny on your life that he has already mapped out how your life will be lived on this earth. But you have to make the decisions to follow the unctioning and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray tonight and we'll dive into our text on tonight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you as we gather tonight as brothers and sisters in Christ that you're forever present, that you are Jehovah Shammar, that you are always there and that you are present help in the time of need. As we gather tonight, let our hearts be open to receive from you. Give us, God, a heart uh, that is clear. We lay aside every sin and wait where ease of beset us. And tonight, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Speak to our hearts, God. Touch my tongue now to anoint me afresh and anew. That the words that are uttered, God, will be impactful. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Tonight, I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, tonight, I want you to join me again. We're in Genesis chapter 39. We've been here for quite a couple of weeks. Um, we're in Genesis chapter 39. Tonight, our focus will be on verse, um, let's say 6b um, through verse 20 um, tonight as we dive into our text. Um, You'll find there these words. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. 
And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast in longing eyes on Joseph and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought in to us a Hebrew to mock us. He came to into me to lie with me and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened that when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you bought to us came in to me to mock me. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. He was there in the prison. Tonight in our time together, want to talk and upgrading your lifestyle simply from the thought. Stay focused. We've been in the story of Joseph for a few weeks now. We've learned that Joseph comes from a dysfunctional family. We've learned that Joseph daddy had four different women he had children by, and Joseph being one of the 13 that his father decided to favor. We witnessed as Joseph's brothers sold him out to slavery for 20 shekels of silver because they were intimidated by the relationship he had with his father, Jacob, but not only the relationship, they were disturbed by his dreams. We've learned that Joseph was placed a soul or bought by a gentleman by the name of Potiphar. And in Potiphar's house, we witnessed Joseph being successful that whatever he put his hands on to do was prospering. That whatever Joseph did, he found great success. Why? Because the Lord was with him. That it doesn't matter where you are placed at in life, as long as God is with you, you can have success in those places. We've learned that even it wasn't Joseph's title that made him prosperous. What made him prosperous was that he was a servant. And in his servanthood, uh, he found 
favor in Potiphar's eyes. Now, Potiphar has placed everything in Joseph's hand because Potiphar, only thing he had to do was decide what he wanted to eat for dinner because Joseph made everything successful. He didn't have to worry about bills being paid on time. Joseph handled it. He didn't have to worry about work at the house. Joseph had already done it. He didn't have to worry about the business that he was running for Pharaoh. Joseph had already been a great CEO, a great person who would get the things done on Potiphar's behalf. But verse 6b lets us know it's a, it's a text that sticks out in the Bible that lets us know although Joseph is a servant and although he is prospering, the Bible tells us he's very handsome, that he looks very nice. And you ought to be saying to yourself, um, what does this have to do with having a dream? What does this have to do with him being successful in Paulus' house? Um, what does this have to do with Joseph being sold into slavery? And the answer comes in the following verse. The Bible says, now it came to pass after these things that his master wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. Let's stop right there because temptation begins first with what we see. That we are not tempted necessarily by what we hear because once we hear something, we start putting a picture in our head of what we just heard. So pictures and things tempt us or excite us. And so we learn very quickly that Joseph um, is now have um, Potiphar's wife casting longing eyes on him, but she looked at him first before she said anything. And I, and I know you wondering the same way that I'm wondering for her to be so forward with him, to look at him, then to say to him, to lie with me. It speaks of the nature of how we look at sexuality in our society. In this day and age, we have, um, we are an over-sexualized um, commu uh, community, uh, over-sexualized um, world in which we can't even watch films without sex scenes that we have, sex has, people have sex without meaning. And so what we see inside this text, um, Polypha's wife is not looking for marriage. Are you breathing? Powerful wife is not looking for a long-term relationship. Powerful wife is looking for the hookup. She's looking for friends with benefits. Powerful wife is looking for someone who she can just meet up with at times. Um, this is not some type of long-term relationship she is looking at. Um, and the Bible says she is bold and say, I'm not asking you to marry me, Joseph. I'm just asking you to lie with me. Oh, let's talk tonight. Um, it's important that we understand, as we mentioned last week, that to be an officer in Pharaoh's court, to be an officer in Pharaoh's palace, um, that oftentimes officers uh, were eunuchs. What is a eunuch? Someone who has been castrated. And having been castrated, uh, this is no excuse, uh, but having been castrated, um, fair or powerful's wife attention is elsewhere. Let me talk to you tonight. This does not give an excuse for her lewd behavior, but what the Bible is letting us in on and allow us to see is that um, this woman is feeling something missing in her life. I want to talk to you tonight. Uh, um, um, this woman has valued herself based off of her body. Can I talk to you tonight? Uh, that she said, in order for me to be a woman, uh, I need some man to desire me. I want to talk to you tonight. Um, that this is more, or this is not about relationship. Uh, this is about the value of bodies. Ah, I want to talk to you tonight. Um, that 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 and Joseph being successful, 
here comes this woman who is longing after him. And the Bible says when she was bold enough and forward enough to say, I desire your body. Oh, help me tonight. Uh, that Joseph, I don't desire you. I desire what I see. I, I desire your handsomeness. I, I, I desire your form, your build, and your appearance. I'm not looking for a full-time relationship. I'm just looking for a lover. Are you talking to me tonight? That, 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 that she says, um, Joseph refused her, the Bible says, and said to his master, wife. And that's why you have to love Joseph. Joseph did not begin to flirt back with her because anytime there's some flirting going back and forth, uh, we are widening the door for temptation. And the enemy only needs a foot inside the door because if the enemy can put his foot inside the door, help me Lord, he'll kick the door open. And so Joseph noticed his language with her. She saw and said, and he responded by saying, look, my master does not know what's with me inside of the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater than I in this house. And the only thing he has kept back from me in this house is you. In other words, Joseph is saying, I already got it going on that I don't need nobody to mess up what I got going on. Let me talk to you about your purpose uh, and your destiny and your future and your dream tonight. Huh? That oftentimes relationships can impact where you're headed in your future. Relationships can impact uh, your destiny in your dream. Huh? That if you hook up with the wrong person, they can set you back 5, 10, 18, 25 years uh, if you hook up with the wrong person. Uh, and in the meanwhile, Joseph is saying to her that I have been focusing on relationship. Help me, Lord. Uh, I've been focusing on working. Uh, I hope you're breathing tonight, young man, young woman. Uh, that it's time for you to focus this season in your life. You need to be focusing on what you're going to be doing with your life. You ain't got time to worry about who loves your body, who likes your body, who think you cute, who think you saucy, who think you got it going on. But you need to be focusing on the task that God has placed in your hand. He said, the only thing he has held back from me is you. And the only reason he held you back. It's because you are his wife. I want you to know this right here. Joe said, let's not skate around the issue. Um, you are uh, committed to somebody. And since you are committed to somebody, I'm not going to violate. Are you listening? The covenant that you have with somebody else. Uh, Joseph saying, before we even, before you go any step further, let me remind you that you are married, that you belong to somebody else. And I'm not going to violate what is already committed to somebody else. Are you breathing tonight? Then he asked the question to her. He turned her attention towards God. That's how you deal with temptation. That's how you stay focused while you are building and working out based off what God has placed into your hands. He said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Notice he didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't say we were having an affair. He didn't say we was um, we was friends with benefits. And he said this great wickedness to defile of covenant. He said, "How can I do this great wickedness and notice this not sin against you, but to sin against God?" That Joseph understand the 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 how sexuality impacted his relationship 
with God. It's so sad that many of us um, are messed up in our spirituality is because we don't have a proper understanding of sexuality. We got to do more with that, not just here tonight, but we as a church have to speak more about what's proper sexuality, what God's blueprint is for marriage, what God's blueprint is for sex, what God's blueprint is for relationship. Uh, that 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 the God the Joseph says that my relationship with God is stronger. I hope you're listening tonight, young man, young woman. It's because I see God within his eyes. Are you breathing? That that that, that once I cross this line then I won't see God or I won't experience God the same way when I cross the line of experiencing my sexuality outside the bounds of holy matrimony that I would I, I can't see God the same way. He said, how can I sin against God? Because if I do this great wickedness, then my relationship with God would not be the same that I won't pray the same, that I won't witness the same, that I won't work the same because my conscience will be seared. I hope you're breathing tonight. Um, that, 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 that I can't see God the same way when I have violated the bounds that he has put into place. Uh, and Joseph said, I can't sin against God. And the Bible says, so it was when Joseph Remain focused on what he was assigned to do. What's your assignment? That's the question you got to you got to answer. Because when you know your assignment, you won't allow the temptation of the flesh to distract you. That it was a distraction that came to Joseph, and the Bible says. And it came to pass after these things that the master wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. He refused her and he said to her how he will be sinning against God. And after the rejection, it was difficult for her to receive because she acquainted the acceptance, the acceptance of her body on being accepted by a man. Ah, help me tonight. That 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 if he denied my body, then I must not be worth anything. My husband, Potiphar, is a eunuch, and I don't have any intimacy with him. Now, this man has rejected me, then I must not be valuable. So she pressed more upon him. That she began to throw herself at him because she is basing um, her femininity on being accepted by a man. Ah, I know this is kind of tough for us tonight around about here. That 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 she daily, the Bible says, that she, she kept coming at her, him, Joseph being him, and he did not heed her. Voice. She kept saying, lie with me. She kept throwing herself on to him, trying to get him to be with her. And Joseph continued to stay focused. In this day and age, it's easy to get um, to lose your focus or become unfocused because there's so much coming at us in this 21st century that it is an over-sexualized culture in which we live in uh, that every day is always placed before you, but Joseph continued to remain focused. Listen, I want to tell you to you tonight um, that whenever you feel temptation coming towards your way, you need to be able to say to yourself, uh, what is my my assignment because I got to remain focused on that which God has placed in my hand. He was focused. Somebody say focus. He was focused. Huh? And the Bible says, verse 11, but it happened about this time. 
What time? It was a time when Joseph was in the house to do his work where his assignment was. She didn't attack him or he wasn't tempted when he was at ease, but the temptation came while he was working. I hope you hear me tonight. That 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 the enemy came in, and I'm not calling powerful wife an enemy, but the spirit um, um to come to try to stop him uh, enter in while he was working. Uh, help me. While he was working and none of the other men was in the house, um, which means Joseph had the capacity to get things done when others were not working. Are you breathing tonight? He remained focused on his assignment. Uh, and I don't know what assignment that God has given you. I don't know what assignment that God has placed in your life, but the word to you tonight is to stay focused, to stay focused on what he placed into your life. The relationships will come. Huh? The money will come. Huh? Everything will come if you remain focused on your assignment. The Bible says that this day he came into the house when all the other men were not inside of the house. She didn't just see him and say she started touching him. That now the temptation has gone from the eyes. It has moved from the conversation. Now the temptation has moved to the point now that she's touching on him. Oh, are you helping me, helping me tonight? Uh, that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. She is literally at the point of undressing him. But the Bible says he left his garment in her hand. Why? Because he was focused. That this is not the appropriate thing to do and this is not my assignment. See, in our day and age, we believe just because we got away with it that means it's okay, but God sees everything that God sees around the corner that while we are playing house, help me God, uh, that the Lord sees everything that we are doing. He left the garment in her hand and he ran for his future. You didn't hear what I just said, that you got to be so focused in your life um, that when temptation try to grab you, you got to say, I got a future I got to run for. That Joseph ran not just because uh, he was afraid, but he ran because he was running for his future because he knew what would happen uh, if he sinned against God and conducted that great wickedness. And so when it was, the Bible says, when she saw that he had left his garment and that he did not accept her for her advancement, nor did he approve of her body because she was showing everything that you can't go to social media now without somebody showing their backside that every picture they take, they're showing the body. They're not elevating God. They're trying to get you to look at them. They're trying to entice you and to invite you into a space that will get you all focused. But I want to say to you tonight, young man, young woman, stay focused on your assignment. I, I don't care how pretty she is. I don't care how, how, how vivacious she is. I don't care how handsome he is. I, I don't care how well built he is. My brother, my Sister, you got to stay focused uh, because God has greatness on your life. There's greatness inside of you. Verse 13, it says, so when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying this. Watch how the enemy operates. See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. Her testimony is given in a way what's going on here in the text. She is upset with Potiphar, so she blamed Potiphar for, what, for her being rejected. That Potiphar, you have rejected me, and now this outsider 
who's supposed to be working up under me, he has rejected me. That, that she is valuing herself based off how men treat her. Oh, God, help me tonight. That she thinks her value is based on how men perceive her. Young lady, young woman, if you're listening to me tonight, I want to say to you that you have value. Regardless of relationship that you don't have, you have value. Regardless if they think you're cute, you're fine, that you got it going, on, I want to tell you tonight that God values you, that you are fearfully, that you are wonderfully made, that marvelous are you in God's eyesight, that you are valuable. And because you are valuable, uh, you don't have to sell yourself uh, to the highest bidder. I hope you're breathing. I hope you're not uncomfortable tonight because I want to say to you that your life matters, who you are, that you bring something to the table because you are valuable. And if they can't appreciate you for who you are and just want you for your body, it's a sign that they didn't see. They haven't seen how valuable you are. I feel God tonight. It is a sign that they don't understand that there's more to you than thighs, hips, and breasts, that there's more to you than what they see on the outside, but there's something great inside of you that won't let you sleep at night. There's an assignment that's on your life. There's a dream that God has given to you that you can't forfeit the dream. You cannot counsel the assignment because God has greatness on you. Let me breathe tonight. Huh? And so she said this Hebrew that my husband brought in, he brought him in here to mock us, to laugh at us. Now, no one else had problem with Joseph. And the the deep you have to pay attention to the text. Huh? The issue is she's upset with Potiphar. Now she's upset with Joseph. And now she got the opportunity to hit two birds with one stone. She says he came in to me to lie with me. Are you breathing? And I cried out with a loud voice. I got a question. The question I got of the text is, um, why did you have to call the men inside to tell them what happened? Because they would have heard you when you cried. So did you really cry out? You all need some help. Huh? Read the text. She says she called the men in to herself to tell them what had transpired. and But she said, I cried out with a loud voice. Why didn't nobody respond when she was crying out with a loud voice? We already know there's trouble in paradise. There's trouble in the house. And she said, and it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice. And I cried out, lies is everywhere, that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. Are you breathing tonight? Uh, that what you see is that the enemy will always falsely accuse you when you are focused. Ah, uh, help me tonight. Um, when you are focused, that enemy will tell every lie he can uh, to get you out of focus. Uh, that she said that I cried out. And he's fled when I cried out. But nobody seemed to have heard her because she had to call them in to themselves, to herself. Let me tell you in this season in your life, be careful when other folks had to pull people in to discuss you. I, 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 I feel fire in here tonight. You have, to, you have to be careful when other people gather together to discuss you, to discuss your dreams, to discuss your assignment, to discuss your future. Then when they start scandalizing and making up things about you, it is a sign that you must be focused. You got to stay focused. You ain't got time for worrying about what they're doing. You got to stay focused on what God has called you to do. You you ought to say to yourself tonight, huh? you ought to say, stay focused. So she said, he came in here to mark us. So when Potiphar got home and his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, your servant, listen to her language, your servant, it's your fault. Your servant did to me after this manner that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph master took him and put him in a prison. The, the text is leaving out something here that he's this man tried to rape his wife, she says, but 
Potiphar, who is an official in Egypt, does not kill him, just put him in prison. There's something going on in the text between Potiphar and his wife. But Joseph was focused. And I want to say this as we come to our conclusion tonight. I don't want to hold you long. I know we can go longer. But oftentimes when you are focused, there are consequences to you remain in focus. I didn't say because you was focused, everything was going to be at ease in Zion and that everybody was going to applaud you and everybody was going to accept you and that doors were going to be open for you. Sometimes when you are focused, they will put you behind closed doors. They will lock you away. Why? Because you are focused, that you are focused on the assignment that God has on your life. And because Joseph was focused, because he did not give in to the temptation of the flesh. The book of Timothy, the epistle of Timothy said you got to flee useful lust. Because he was focused and did not give in to the seduction, he landed himself in prison. And the place, help me God, <laughs> where the king's prisoners were confined. Some of us just missed that. He, he was in Potiphar's house, who was an official of the king. But because he was focused, it led him to prison. But in prison, he get housed where, where the king's prisoners are. Okay. In other words, Joseph is getting closer. Ah, I felt that. Closer to the king. That, 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 that God has been orchestrating what they meant for evil all of this time. He's been orchestrating him to get him closer to the palace. That in order for me to fulfill the dream that I have on your life, you've been faithful over the assignments up to now that I've been giving you. But Joseph, just because you've been faithful over the assignments, uh, there's still more you got to go through in order for you to get to the dreams uh, that I have for you. Let me say this to you right quick. Listen, yes, the assignments may not match the dream right now, but the assignments are being used to get you to the dream. Are you breathing tonight? Uh, that God would use everything he He's assigned for you to do it to your life. And yes, you may think that man have given you that assignment. Nothing happens by, by accident. That the same assignment you have now, it may appear that it came out of the blue. But God was intentional when it came to the assignments that he placed in your life. Because he knew what the dream would cause for. That what skill set you would need to be able to walk inside of, the, walk inside of your dreams. So tonight... When we look at Joseph's life, let's remember that he was focused. And part of me, look back at Paul's wife and say she was troubled. Because in this day, in Egypt time, they looked at the women differently and she wanted to be accepted for her body. Except if she wasn't looking for a position, she was looking for someone to accept her body. My sister, tonight, you are more than your body. My brother, tonight, you are more than your body. But that's something so uniquely designed and specific for your life that God will have you to stay focused. To see what the end of this was going to look like. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior tonight. Won't you simply pray this prayer with me. Say Lord Jesus. I believe that you died for my sins. And that you got up from the grave with all power in your hand. I confess you tonight. And ask you to come into my life and be my personal Savior. From this day forth I live for the glory of God. In Jesus name. Amen. Now, if you have prayed that prayer for the first time or to rededicate yourself, please make sure you're in a church home that's teaching you how to walk inside the kingdom of God. If you want to make Tabernacle of Praise your church home, send us a message here 
right now we're currently doing hybrid services. We have a, um, a limited capacity for in-person services on Sunday, 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock. But also we're still here online. We would love for you to make sure you're part of a body who's growing you into the full statue of who Christ is. For everyone else, we're going to ask you to return your tithe, to give your offerings, to sow your seed tonight. Never come before the Lord empty handed, but always to bring a gift unto the king. For he give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. For with the same measure you give, God wants to give that back to you again. 30, 60, even 100 fold return. Amen. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for your generosity. It is my hope and my prayer as we leave this place, but never God's grace, that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you, that the Lord will lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus name we do pray and remember that there is victory in your praise.